everybody, this is No Excuses. I'm your host, Rodney Arbo, and I'm here with my very special guest, Vincent Pastor. How are you, Vince? How you doing? It's nice to be here. Nice. I'm glad you're here, too. Vince, we know you from The Sopranos, of course, but your life is much larger than that. You've done so many different things, and you are one hell of a comedian. Well, you know, that's all new, <laughs> that, the comedian stuff. Yes, it is. Because I don't really consider myself a comedian. I consider myself now an entertainer because I'm an actor. Um, I have a band called The Gangster like Squad. Musician. I just did two shows, uh, Thursday and Friday night. Um, I do some comedy. I just came back from Iowa with Gumba Johnny. Um, uh, I, uh, I'm a writer. I wrote Mama's Chair and I wrote Crazy Horse. I'm a part of a theater company with Maureen Van Zant, and I do a lot of uh, small projects uh, we call them small, they're uh, sh film shorts with yep. my friend Paul Begazi, and we're knocking off award after award. So, and we're just talking about doing another one uh, with these short films. So I'm busy, I'm, I'm, I'm busy, I'm bull of bays. That's fantastic. There's one thing most people don't know about you is who's Vinny before television. I well, understand you were in the Navy. Oh, now you're going back. Yeah, let's go you back. You know, it's strange that you should bring that up because I'm directing a play with my theater company and the play is about, uh, Vietnam veterans 10 years later and it became a movie called Jackknife with Robert De Niro and I used to work on the role and now teaching I was teaching this scene to uh, uh, Lou Vitulli who's from New Rochelle good actor and I said uh, Megs and we start working on it and we took it out of scene study now we're producing it as a play and it's about the veterans and we're driving home the other night from rehearsal I said I know where we're going to bring this play he says, where? I said, we're going to bring it to all the Veterans Administration all over the country. Beautiful. We're going to bring a play directed by Vincent Pastor about the Vietnam vets, a wonderful play. We're going to bring it to the venues and let them enjoy this play. And I called up Ron Tochi uh, from the, the Veterans Assembly, and he said, Vinny, green light, let's move it. So now I just got to get a show together, and I may ask my friend Paul Begazi to get on You file, think? Because, well, Paul and I produced a hit play down in New York called Lampost Reunion, which was originally done with Danny Aiello. And we did that down in New York, and we were sold out every night. That's fantastic. Yeah, so we like doing what we do, and we, but we do different things. I can know? see that, Vin. You're, you're such a ball of energy, you know? just even hanging out all, with you off camera. Yeah, like, it's like, so much fun. Yeah, like last night, I, my band was playing up in um, South Salem, and I got stuck for a keyboard player because Marco lives across the lake. <laughs> He got six, so he can make a site called a Benny who lives in uh, Nutley, New Jersey, to come all up to South Salem. Benny shows up, and I was so glad. But I know Benny since the 80s. Wow. Since my club days, before I was an actor. He was one of my musicians. And I wrote a story now called Crazy Horse, and we work on it sometimes in workshop now. And Benny's part of it. He's one of the characters. That's fantastic. From then. And so now I got Benny sitting next to me. Uh, he's playing. And I, was, I had all these wonderful guys up on stage that I lived my life with. Jay Prince and Al Orlo and Charlie Powers. And then I moved over and I started singing with Benny. That's great. And we were laughing. <laughs> and then um, I was driving home last night. It was late. And the cell phone goes off. I said, what? And he says, you gave me $100 too much. I said, no, I didn't. And I said, it ain't about the money now, Benny. It's about, we're still friends, right. you know? Because I said to the audience last night, I said, my father used to say you can cut your friends on your fingers, five, ten. I got six in back of me. <laughs> she only got four fingers left. Well, I got another one right out there on <laughs> the other is, side yes. of that black curtain. Yes, we do. I got some good friends. You sure yeah, do. Yeah. It must be and that's why we're here. That's we're right. here for Steven. That's correct. Because he's our good friend. Steve Muscatello, who you helped train. Well, I gave him a little start. I'm, yes. uh, that's nice that he should put my name on his resume. He you should. Know, as an acting coach no, he, for a while. He, he absolutely is grateful for yeah, it. Yeah, he's he doing a play up me. here now called um, um, Breaking Legs. And I, when I was teaching him, I said, here. And I gave him Breaking Legs. This is, there's a great role for you in there. And I don't even think he ever read a play before in his life. But he also <laughs> wrote a screenplay, and he's been handing it around. And, well, maybe we'll get that done. But, but he's a good guy. And, and when... You know, he came up to one of my comedy shows up in, um, up in Westport with Gumba Johnny, and he said to me, would you do my show? And I said, what show? My comedy show. It's for St. Joseph's. He says, yeah, I'll do it. I said, but let me check the date. And you worry when you commit yourself to Absolutely. things like this, if something's going to happen, like your health or you get a booking and that you can't make it. And when you're here, when we pulled up and I was like a half an hour late, I said, okay, 
I was half an hour early. <laughs> I said to my guys, okay, we're here. And that's it. And you can take a deep breath. It's, it's like Harry Chapin said. <laughs> it ain't the going, it's the getting. <laughs> what kind of music is your favorite outside of what you do for well, yourself? Well, what, do, what we do is classic rock. And, yes. and that's, that's, that's what I thrive on, you know. I make a joke when we do four Van Morrison songs because I said, now nah, i got to send Van another residual check. <laughs> or when we do a Bruce song or, or a little Steven song. But that's what we try to put our, you know, our core around. But then there's the classic rock songs, you know, from the Stones. Yes. You know, and uh, the Temptations and the Drifters. So we give you a show, and that's what it is. And it's time to catch on. I can see that. Yeah, we, we're playing at Resorts Casino. I'm going to plug this. Please. Uh, <laughs> Are you giving me a choice, March then? March 22nd at 8 o'clock. <laughs> On Say that again, Ben, I missed it. <laughs> Resorts Casino, Wednesday, March 22nd, Bar 360 in Queens, 8 o'clock. Vinny Pastor's Gangster Squad. That's going to be... So I gave you the plug. You sure did. Right. I feel honored. It's yeah. like you, you did it on my I'm show. And next week, in Florida. Boy, you travel. Delray. Yeah, Delray Beach with Goomba Johnny doing stand-up stand -up comedy. So if anybody in Florida is out there, me and Johnny, Delray. And Paul and I were just talking. We've got a film coming up, so we're going to be busy. And what, can you let us know what the film's about? No, let him talk to you about okay. it. Okay. Because then they're going to say I'm a rat. And I would never <laughs> play a rat. <laughs> no, we wouldn't no, want you. I would never we wouldn't play want a rat. to repeat history, would we? No, I don't play a rat. <laughs> That's why I quit uh, The Apprentice, you know. You know, I'm giving yeah, you everything ask I'm you. supposed to be giving out there tonight. I know. It, this let is your warm up. <laughs> uh, no, let me save it. Let me save it for a <laughs> Well, you, I was just going to ask you about The Apprentice. That was something you were there, and you actually raised some pretty decent money while you were there. Well, you know, it was all this pre, pre, pre Trump time. When yes. It had, uh, Donald had nothing to do with politics. Donald was one of the most successful television producers around, besides whatever else he had his fingers in. Right. And when you get a phone call that they, he wants you to be in the apprentice, and you think about the, the, the other people, they're the actors in the country. Right. That he could have picked, because he's picking nine people. Trace Atkins, Pierce, Stephen Baldwin, who lives down the corner. That's right. I love Stephen. We all love Stephen up here. <laughs> um, and, when he, and he's saying he's picking me. Why didn't he pick, uh, why didn't he ask Tony Sirico? Why didn't he ask Steve Sharippa? Why didn't he ask Tony Darwin? What is he picking me for? But it's almost like why Woody Allen asked me to be in his play, Bullets Over Broadway, because I'm jumping the story, because I really don't it's, want to talk about Donald too much. I don't want you either. No, I don't want to get myself in well, hot not, water. Yeah. I don't. I really, we'll when stay people away from ask politics. me questions about Donald, I don't want to talk about it because he helped me with my life. I was going through something, and he hired me on an apprentice, and someday that's going to come out. Yes, uh, he will. knew I was going through a major issue. Paul knows. And he still hired me. And he put me on uh, national television because he believed I was innocent. Beautiful. So that was a statement. Yes, it was. Vinny didn't do that. Because if he did, I wouldn't have him on my show. <laughs> right? That's so, so that's true. the kind of guy he is. And people don't know that about yes. Donald. There's a lot, not to get into it, but there is a lot about that person who is not known. Yeah, I mean. And misconstrued, uh, of course. You want to talk politics. Steve, no. I'm going to talk like Stephen Baldwin. Because, you know, Stephen's nuts. He lives up here. He goes around picking in all the strip clubs. You know what Stephen does up here? I'm going to get him in trouble. He goes around, he copies the plate numbers of the guys that are inside. And then he gets in touch with, uh, the, uh, with the Department of Motor Vehicles. And he sends them a letter. <laughs> Vinny, you're too much. That's true. You're too much. I can see how your comedy is doing great. Well, because, you know, we're in Iowa. This is so true. I'm going to say it on stage again. It's going to be a good little rehearsal now. We leave Chicago. I said to Johnny, why are we taking two planes? Where are we going? Where are we going? Why are we going to take two planes? Where we, how far is this outside of Chicago? So we get in Chicago. You've got to run around the airport. And you get on this little plane that maybe 12 people. I, can't, I was hitting my head. And you're sitting there. <laughs> and I'm stuck there next to this lady who told me to turn my cell phone off. That didn't go over well. She said, turn your cell phone off. I said, but we didn't take off yet. <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, you certainly tell you. I said, I'll turn it off just before we take off. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and then it goes off. Did you play turn? But then when the plane was, when the plane wasn't landing and when the plane was running out of gas, <laughs> she was holding my hand. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my God, that's so <laughs> that's that's hysterical. She said, "What's happening?" I said, "We're going down. Hold yeah. my hand." That's what I said to her. <laughs> There's nothing better than true stories. But that's true. I know. And the, and, the, and the captain said, we have to land. We're running out of gas. <laughs> and then as we were landing, he said, look to your right. That's where Buddy Holly's plane crashed. <laughs> you can't make this stuff that's up. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and then we landed in Cedar Rapids, and we had to get all the way back to Dubuque, the boy, wherever it is. And the guy who drove us, he was like Norman Bates, man. It was foggy out. I thought we were going to we really get killed, man. And then we went and did this gig in this casino. Nobody was there. And then I go to the bar. More people and this in the girl plane. comes over. She looked like uh, Elvira. And she comes up to me and asks me if I want to go get high at her house with her husband. What? <laughs> So goodbye says, good thing you didn't go. Sounds, sounds to me like she was going to cut you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's this funny. is hysterical. Okay, this is a warm-up. I'm going to go out and repeat the same shit. <laughs> well, you know what it is. That's, that's my show. That's you guys it. just saw my show. We did. Paul's <laughs> my producer tonight. He's approving. He's laughing back there. He may tell me to cut some <laughs> language. That's okay. You know what, Vince? We, we should film this. We're, we're going to cut Bring it here. Bring Paul on. I got to go. Hey, I got to go out there and host St. Anthony's uh, fundraiser. And then in June, I'm going back to St. Joseph's in New Rochelle, and I'm doing one gig there with the band. So I'm doing a little comedy tonight. I go back with the band. But if you ask me, ask me, what do you like better, comedy or the rock and roll band? Which one do you like better? I like rock and roll. Good for you. Because rock and roll never, never dies, dies, and it doesn't make you get old. I'm up there the past two nights. I'm running around like I'm in the gym Good with for a you. tambourine. Everybody, I yeah. want to thank Vincent Pastor yeah. for being on the No Excuses show. I'm your host, Rod. Well, there's Nirvana. no excuse that you can't come and see uh, there is the no Gangster excuse. Squad at Resorts. You can't. Bar 360 in Queens, New York on March 22nd, 8 o'clock show. Thanks, Vin. Thank you. I'll see you again, buddy.